I'm going to talk about the kind of errors that can happen when we do hypothesis testing and how does uh, setting the value of alpha or the significance level of the test actually impact the probability of encountering an error. Now let's take an example of a sampling distribution that we have over here. We've got uh, the normal distribution around a hypothesized mean. This normal distribution tells us what is the probability that the sample that we extract is going to be certain standard errors away from uh, the null hypothesis. So over here 0 plus 1.96 minus 1.96 refer to the distance in terms of standard errors and not the value of the sample means itself. This is the probability of encountering a sample around the hypothesized mean. Now when we are testing it at alpha of 0 0.05 or 5% uh, significance level, the dark region, so this dark region is 95% of my uh, uh, area under the curve and the red region over here, so this is 2.5% here and we've got 2.5% over here. So in fact 95 is also split into 47.5 here and 47.5 here. Now the probability that I will extract a sample from a given uh, population mean referred by this point which lies in the red region over here is 2.5% here and 2.5% here. So there is a 5% chance that I will extract a sample which lies in this region from a mean which lies over here. So there is a chance that such a sample can be extracted. If I do extract such a sample and the probability of such a sample coming out is 5% and I do a hypothesis test, I will end up rejecting the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis being that the sample that I have extracted has come from the population mean given by the center of this distribution. So in this case, even though the sample is coming from this hypothesized population, I am still rejecting the case or I am rejecting the null hypothesis and the probability that I will commit such an error is 5% because this is the, the normal distribution that we have covered over here. So in 5% of the cases, I will reject, sorry let me spell that better, I will reject when I should have accepted. So this is the case where uh, an error has been made. For the, uh, I would I should have said that this sample is in fact from this population, but there's a five percent chance, and by chance the sample that I've extracted did lie in those extremes around the the distribution, and I ended up rejecting the null hypothesis. This is one kind of error that can happen. What is a different error that I can happen? The uh, different error is. Uh, the other kind of error, so we are look, looking at an error where I end up accepting the hypothesis when the hypothesis should have been rejected. For example, let's uh, pick up another distribution here, so I'll draw it in a small fashion. Uh, the actual hypothesized, uh, the hypothesized mean of the population is given at this point. The actual mean lies over here, right? Based on this, uh, the distribution around the mean would follow a sampling distribution something like this and the sample that I extract from this mean lies somewhere over here. right? But when I am testing it against this particular hypothesis, this is the hypothesis, I draw a distribution over here right? and I say that this mean or this sample when I test it against this particular hypothesis, I end up accepting the hypothesis that this is actually the population mean. Why is this happening? Because these two uh, uh, these two uh, means are very close to each other. This is the actual population mean, this is the hypothesized population mean. Both are very close to each other in such a way that the sampling distribution against both of them overlap to a great extent. When this is happening, I am unable to distinguish whether the sample that I have extracted could have come from this uh, population distribution or this population distribution. In fact, if I do tests around this, I will end up accepting any number of uh, null hypothesis. This is the second kind of error that can happen when I accept the null when I should have been rejecting it. right? So these are the two kinds of errors that can happen when I do hypothesis testing. Now I want to, to, to uh, you know, cover how does setting the value of alpha in fact uh, control uh, the kind of error that I am going to extract. For example over here, instead of uh, setting alpha at 0.05%, if I set the alpha at let's say 1%, what will happen? So let's, uh, let me just draw it out in a different uh, sheet. 
So I have a different sheet. So let's draw out a sampling distribution. Right. So I have a sampling distribution. Well, I can do a better job. Let me see here. Well, apparently I can't, but uh, let's work with this for now. So assuming this is the sampling distribution I have. When I do a test at 5% level, assuming this is my acceptance region. So I go 1.96 standard errors on both sides. So my acceptance region is this shaded area. This is 95%. So there's a 5% chance that the sample I extract will come from in these regions. So 2.5% here. And two and a half percent here. So there's a five percent chance that I will reject a sample when the sample actually came from this distribution. Now, what happens if I move it from 95 percent to 99 percent? So, in case when I do to 99 percent, what happens to my acceptance and the rejection region? So, let me do this. So, from 1.96, I actually go how many standard errors? So, if you remember in our previous class, from 1.96, now I will go. 2.57 standard errors on both sides. So I go 2.57 standard errors here, 2.57 standard errors here. My acceptance region now actually covers a 99% region around the mean. So my acceptance region, which was earlier, this region, now suddenly gets extended on both sides by additional few points. So the, the rejection region now is 0.5% here and 0.5% here. So total rejection region is 1%. So there's still a 1% chance that a sample may be extracted which lies in these regions from this hypothesized mean and I'll still reject the null. Right? That's the probability. So probability of committing a type 1 error or the error of rejection goes from 5% down to 1%. Right? On the other hand, the acceptance region has moved from 95% to 99%. An example is that supposing the sample lay at this point. At a 95% level, I would have ended up rejecting the sample and saying the sample cannot come from this population. But when I test it at 99%, since my acceptance region has now increased from 95 to 99, I will end up accepting the hypothesis and saying the sample could have come from this population. So when I move the alpha from 5% to uh, 1%, I am actually increasing. So my acceptance region acceptance region is going to increase. My rejection region is going to decrease. So the probability that I will commit one kind of error, the error of rejecting the null when the null is true will go down. But I am likely to commit the other kind of error now. Now I am more likely to accept extreme samples as coming from the part of the same population than I would have earlier. So the probability that I will accept a sample, even though the sample may not be from the hypothesized mean uh, or the population mean is not the hypothesized mean, is going to increase now. So if I increase alpha from 5% or decrease alpha from 5% to 1%, one kind of error goes down, the other kind of error goes up. Right? These are the two kinds of errors that can happen during hypothesis testing and they are, uh, uh, they are uh, uh, iterated over here. So the two types of errors are also called type 1 and type 2 errors or false positive and false negative. So the type 1 error and a lot of people confuse these two errors so uh, it's always uh, easy, it's always uh, you know handy to have a uh, written statement sometime. It says that rejecting type 1 is rejecting the null when null is true. That I reject so the sample that I am testing is actually coming from the hypothesized population mean, but I still end up rejecting when the uh, uh, I still end up rejecting the sample. So this is the, tie, the the first kind of error. The second kind of error is accepting the null or saying that this particular sample that I am testing is coming from the hypothesized population mean when in fact the sample does not come from that hypothesized mean. This is the type two error. And we've already covered that how can we change the value of alpha to minimize one kind of error versus the other. So I want to, you know, uh, uh, reiterate this again. So the type 1 and type 2 errors. And what happens when uh, we change the value of alpha. So we've covered this again just to ensure that you're able to follow this. I'm going to do this again. So I have a given hypothesized mean. So let's say this is the hypothesized mean mu. And I have a distribution around, sorry, 
I'll make it a little better. So I have a hypothesized mean. This is mu naught, and I also have a distribution around this mean, right? And this is uh, the acceptance region against which I am going to test this again. Let this alpha value be five percent, and I extract a sample. <laughs> from uh, the population mean which i'm testing and that sample lies at this point over here this is the sample mean x bar now when i look at the the null over here the null was that the population mean is mu naught is mu or uh, the mu naught whichever i'm testing the alternative hypothesis is that the population mean is not mu naught when i test the sample over here x bar lies in the rejection region over here so i reject the null i go with the alternative but supposing i wanted to test it at alpha equal to 1% at 1% my acceptance region now actually increases so my acceptance region lies here and here so now in this case x bar lies within the acceptance region of 99% or alpha equal to 1% so here i am in fact going to go with the null and say that the population mean is actually mu naught right so as you can see by changing the value of alpha the uh, result can also change over here and i can actually in one case accept the null in the other case i can reject the null simply by testing it against different values of alpha and what is the probability that i'm going to commit an error the alpha the testing value or the alpha is the probability whenever i set a value of alpha equal to 5% there is a 5% chance that i will end up rejecting the null when the null is true the probability of type 2 error cannot be judged by looking at the value of alpha or uh, the significance of the test and i can minimize this error by increasing the value of alpha or decreasing the value of alpha if i test it at alpha equal to 20% that means the acceptance region is 80% on both sides so i have a much smaller acceptance region in this case i will only accept samples which lie close to the hypothesized mean and i will start rejecting samples which are even a little further away on both sides in this case i am more likely to commit a type 1 error rejecting the null when the null is true so by increasing the value of alpha i increase the probability of a type 1 error by decreasing the value of alpha by making the alpha 5% 1% or even smaller i reduce the probability of committing a type 1 error but there is a trade off if i reduce the alpha value to let's say 1% therefore my acceptance region is large therefore my test is very generous in comparing to the null hypothesis in this case i might actually accept a sample which lies uh, many standard deviations away but within the 99% confidence interval and say you know what the null is true but in that but in uh, such a case it's quite likely that the sample may actually not belong to the population mean but belong to another population mean which may be close by in this case i am quite likely to commit a type 2 error so when i increase the acceptance region by increasing the acceptance region around a test i decrease the probability of a type 1 error but i increase the probability of a type 2 error however by decreasing the acceptance region i increase the probability of a type 1 error but i decrease the probability of committing a type 2 error now depending on the cost of a type 1 versus type 2 both errors do not have the same cost right uh because sometimes committing a type 1 is more serious sometimes committing a type 2 is more serious in that case we will have to set the value of alpha very very intelligently to figure out what kind of error does more damage to us and i'm going to cover that in the next lectures that what are the types of errors and how do we actually want to minimize by controlling the value of alpha